tell you how But one thing I know I can say I am saved And one day I'll see him My Lord face to face Because of that day all my sins erased until then I'll talk of his amazing grace and shout this one thing through all of
tonight, if you will, page number 219, Little is Much When God is in it. We're going to sing all four verses together. I want you to sing with us tonight, if you will. you back to church this evening and we're so grateful that you're here tonight and if you're glad to be back at church would you say amen Amen. it's so good to see each one and I trust you're enjoying this beautiful fall weather that God has blessed us with so very much we certainly thank the Lord for a wonderful service this morning and a great crowd great spirit and I was told uh, that uh, our junior church you know we have the children's church ages um, five to seven, and then the uh, junior church uh, will go to eight to uh, ten or eleven. And the junior church uh, had seventeen in there. They had to move a class. They had to move to the activity center. And so, what a blessing there! And so, we're so thankful for that, and appreciate uh, how God is blessing there, and just a great spirit. And I thank the Lord for uh, His blessings upon the ministry here. Uh, we have several different prayer requests that I want to get to you as we open up in prayer. Uh, tonight, and I want you to pray for Margie Everhart. She uh, has had her MRI, I think I understood that properly, and I think she's kind of waiting on a surgery uh, coming up in the next few weeks, but pray for her. It's a pinched nerve type scenario that she's got going on, and uh, so pray for her with that upcoming procedure, and she's going through that process. We've got several folks sick, so a couple families are sick, and I want you to, if you see someone that's uh, not perhaps in their place tonight or this morning, I want to encourage you to reach out to them, text them, let them know that they were missed, as you always do. Uh, Larry Sheik has a procedure this Wednesday, uh, so pray for him with that. And then also uh, Mike Smith will be having surgery on Wednesday as well with his gallbl- uh, removing his gallbladder. And so I want you to pray for him uh, Wednesday for that. Uh, we have several families that are traveling, and so pray for them uh, with that. And um, uh, remember that uh, for, as they travel. Raise your hand if you realize there's crazy people out on the highway. And uh, I am just in awe of the craziness out there. And um, uh, some of you are looking at me like, well, Pastor, you probably contribute to that. But, uh, man, I'm just, uh, you know, sometimes you have to pray before you leave the driveway. Lord, put a hedge of protection right about us, you know. And uh, so pray for them. And then uh, Wilma Adams, uh, she had her procedure 
this past week, and uh, she's in recovery, so continue to pray for her uh, with that. And then also Connie DelPardo uh, had a knee surgery uh, this past week. I was able to go see her at Clemens uh, Medical Center where she had that, and she was just staying one night, and I uh, understand that she's no doubt home now. Michael, do you know if she's home? Okay, so pray for her with that recovery, and she misses the church so much, and they're hoping to be back with us. This is, I think, her third surgery, is that right, in the last year or so, and so pray for her with that. And then Miss Hannah Craig's grandson, Cooper. Uh, many of you are, uh, I know, following uh, Cooper, and uh, we're really praying for Cooper, and so I want you to remember him in prayer tonight as well. And then if you're here tonight, you have a need or a prayer request, or you just want the Lord to speak to your heart, would you raise your hand tonight? And so we're so thankful to have the Delapaz family. They're one of our missionaries. They were already supported the church when I and my family came here. And uh, right after we got here, uh, I guess a year into it maybe, uh, they were with us. And so it's been about six years since I've got to see them. Uh, but they're faithful in giving us their prayer letters and, and appreciate their spirit. And uh, they're just sweet, wonderful people. And so they'll be a big part of the service tonight. He'll be preaching for us. And I'm ready to go tonight. I've got the message in my Bible. But I just feel like that the Lord would have him to preach for us. And he'll be singing. And, and uh, you're going to be blessed by Brother, De- uh, Brother Delapaz and his family uh, tonight. But let's pray and ask God for his many blessings tonight uh, upon the service this evening. Father, we love you. Thank you so much for allowing us to meet back together again tonight. Thank you, Father, for this church. Thank you for what it means to me. Thank you for the spirit. Thank you for the, uh, the hard work and the, the genuineness and the, the realness, Father, of this place and the people that make it up. Father, thank you for your many blessings, Father, in just so many areas, Father. And, uh, we just give you all the glory and the praise and honor and thanksgiving for what you've done and what you're doing. I ask that you continue to bless in every way. Father, bless tonight in these different prayer requests that we have. Father, we have several families that are sick tonight, several families that are traveling, and we'll be traveling. And, Father, we ask that you be with them. And, Father, be with the church family, the, the needs, Father, the hands that were just raised. I pray that you meet those needs according to your will. I pray that you bless those who are watching online who are uh, not able to be with us tonight. And, Father, I pray that you speak to our hearts in a special way through the singing, through the preaching. May you be magnified and exalted through everything that's said and done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That's going to be too long when we have our great reunion day. Let's all stand together once again tonight. We're going to give all we've got with all of our hearts as we sing once again unto the Lord. Look at the words. Think about them. 
what they mean to us tonight as we work hard to, uh, for this I Want That Mountain Sunday. All right, but the holiday's going to lead us. Give it all you've got tonight. Sing together. I want that mountain. that through a couple more times tonight. Sing out. I want that mountain. I want that mountain. Where the milk and honey flow. Where the grapes of Esco grow. I want that mountain. I want that mountain. The mountain that my Lord has given me. Raise your hand if you feel like you need some oxygen after singing that. And uh, I like that song, and uh, I think we need to add that to our repertoire here. And, uh, but that just falls right in line with what we're praying about and giving for on October 29th. And uh, I want to encourage you to continue to pray about how God would have you to be a part of I Want That Mountain Sunday. Maybe, maybe you just want to give $5. If that's all you can give... You know, I remember the, the widows, the two mites the widow put in, and Jesus saw all of these different people that had a lot of money, and they were putting in of their abundance. And this poor widow, Jesus said, come and put in just two mites, just two little mites. I've, I've got one in my office somewhere. And uh, just put in basically a penny, nothing, hardly. And, uh, but Jesus said, that, that lady right there, she put more in than all of these guys because she gave everything she had, and she get her heart into it. These guys are just out of their abundance. And what I want you to do is just pray and seek the Lord about what you'd have to give. If God puts $5 on your heart, then I want you to give 5 
If God, if you have the ability to give 50000 100000 and God puts that on your heart, I want you to invest that. And, uh, but I want you to pray. I'm, I'm not telling you to do that. I'm just simply saying I want you to pray. Uh, speak to your, your spouse about what you have. Men, you ought, to, you ought to get your wife by the hand and say, Sweetie, uh, I feel like we ought to, let's pray and together and, and figure out what God would have us to, how God would have us to be a part. Maybe it's $10, maybe it's $1, maybe it's 50 cent. Uh, maybe it's 100000 but whatever it is, maybe it's $500, maybe it's $100, but whatever that figure is, we need 180000 to keep us out of debt, and uh, building uh, 6600 uh, 6, has came in uh, already this month, uh, and we're just halfway in the month. Uh, this came in uh, for building fund, and so to God be the glory. But let's continue to be faithful in our giving, and uh, you say, Pastor, what's going to happen if it don't all come in? We're, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there but let's just have high hopes and let's trust the lord amen let's have some faith and so let's keep that in mind ushers you come at this time let's pray over offering and then after the offering uh you can be seated all right so uh sweetie will you play for us i know i'm mixing things up a little bit here with the offering and uh i'm mixing everything up here tonight so um, but if you could play with us, just play I Want That Mountain. That was a pretty good tune, okay? And, uh, and then let's pray, and we'll receive the offering tonight. Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you for this opportunity to give. I pray that you bless each gift and giver tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. our announcements tonight and our birthdays and anniversaries and then right after that we'll have a video presentation uh, by brother Delapaz and then we'll have him up come and sing and he's going to give a short uh, presentation just about 10 minutes or so about how God's using him who he is many of you raise your hand I'm just curious raise your hand if you've never uh, met the Delapaz family before okay so pretty much 90 percent so uh, he'll be introducing himself pretty much tonight and so, uh, and then we'll have a song, we'll have our special that we have prepared for you tonight, and then he'll come back and preach for us this evening. We want to recognize our birthdays and anniversaries tonight, and uh, we want to say happy birthday to Judy Cox. Judy, are you here tonight? All right, I see a bunch of fingers pointing. You must be a popular lady around here. And so, happy birthday, Miss Judy. We love you so very much. Evan Ellison, happy birthday to you, buddy, if you're watching online. Uh, and that is, of course, tomorrow. Happy birthday, Everly Royal, tomorrow as well. Dale Harriman, happy birthday to you tomorrow. And I understand this is the big uh, 9-0. No, 8 I got that wrong. Oh, so he's 80 uh, tomorrow. We're so thankful for him. And we love him and Miss Barbara. Uh, Sharon Bowles, are you in here tonight? You're here. And we're so thankful for this lady. And uh, we're kin somehow. It just slips my mind, the connection. But happy birthday. There's a lot I could say here. I want to I wanna just joke around, but I better not uh, for everybody involved. But happy birthday to my mom And uh, on the 17th this week. Walker Eskridge, happy birthday to you on the 19th. How old are you going to be, buddy? 17. Happy birthday, buddy. We appreciate you and love you so very much. Mary Lou Smith, happy birthday to you on the 20th of this week. We're so happy. This is your 27th birthday, I assume. Close to it? Okay. So happy birthday, Miss Mary Lou. Larry Sheik, happy birthday to you on the 20th. How old are you going to be, Larry? Seven. No. Yeah. Yeah. 79. Wow. You've got probably 40 or 50 more to go. And we love you, Larry. Let's give all these a hand tonight. 
All right, then there's just a few announcements real quickly tonight. Don't forget about our Wednesday evening service this Wednesday at 7 o'clock. And so keep that in mind if you will. I'm looking forward to wrapping up our series that we've been in on the life of Samson. And um, we, we almost got through this past Wednesday night. And this Wednesday night we're going to be talking about Samson uh, and, and finishing up this series about his path and his downward path. And I think that's going to be really helpful to each one. And so I want to encourage you to be here, be faithful to that. Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, as well as our Kids for Truth program, as well as uh, the teen program. And then outreach. We're going out. This is the best time in the world to do outreach. It's just perfect weather. And uh, so let's, uh, let's uh, be a part of that 5.30 to 6.30. And, uh, so let's, and let's pray that God would use that in a great and mighty way. Uh, to get people to see people saved, active in the church, and uh, if you're going to be a part of the meal, we need to get your uh, get get the number for that. So raise your hand if you plan to be here Wednesday night at five for the meal, okay? And so I see hands all over the building. God bless you for your faithfulness to the outreach visitation program, okay? All right, thank you so much. And then uh, just a couple quick things here uh, that are happening. Operation Christmas Child. If you have any questions about Operation Christmas Child this year, uh, see Joe Eskridge. And uh, he'll help you in any way that he can. Uh, the boxes, the information, the sign-up sheet information, all of that is over in the activity center. You simply grab the amount of boxes that you need that you sign up for. Maybe you're signing up for a boy, seven to nine years old. You take that box, go to Dollar General, Walmart, wherever, fill it full with the list uh, of items that they recommend. And, uh, and then put a rubber band around it, bring it back in by November 12th. So keep that in mind, if you will, please. A lot got going on Wednesday, so I thank you for that. And keep that in mind, if you will. Uh, we'll be voting, as you saw in the bulletin t- this morning, and we mentioned on Wednesday we'll be voting on uh, Neil Spainer or Michael Cincinnati for trustees. Uh, Lord willing, uh, we'll be closing on a-, a third of this property over here, of course, the siblings. And uh, so uh, one portion of this property that we voted on to purchase, we'll be closing on that in about two weeks roughly, okay? And we'll try to update you on that as, as, as much as we can. There's not a long process because it's a cash-type situation, and we're grateful that God has allowed us to be able to do this. And so the trustees are simply, they'll serve a three-year term just like our deacons, and they're, the primary, they're, they're just... Uh, uh, in that position to sign legal documents, so deeds, et cetera, et cetera. So that's basically what they're there for, and they're just uh, given permission by the deacons in the church and the pastor, uh, of course, to sign the legal documents on behalf of the church. And so that's what that's for, and so we need to do that uh, because about a day or two after that is when we'll probably, Lord willing, sign those things. So uh, it's, God's just putting this thing together just so incredible, and uh, it's just it's not too fast it's not too slow it's just like right on time and so let's continue to pray for that furtherance there uh senior ladies hat day will be happening next sunday at the 22nd so uh ladies missionary prayer fellowship are sponsoring that if you uh, have any questions that you can see one of the ladies they're part of the lmpf uh empty nesters fellowship this saturday october 21st uh they'll be falling down i mean riding down the mountain uh i'm joking i had to say that uh, but I'm joking. Uh, uh, Lord willing, they'll be falling down, but uh, they'll be riding down the mountain. And uh, Saturday, October 21st, we're excited about that for, uh, for those who are gone. I think there's a good number going. And so uh, if you want to go uh, see Jeff or Nancy Cox about that. Children's Christmas play, uh, please sign up by next Sunday, the 22nd. Uh, the play practice will start in Heritage Hall on the 29th at 5 o'clock. And so keep that in mind, if you will. Harvest Festival is coming up Saturday on the 28th. This is 4 to 6 p.m. We'll have hot dogs and cotton candy, popcorn. It's going to be a blast. And uh, pray for good weather. We're going to have a hayride, a big bonfire out here. And so it's just going to be a great time of fellowship. We'll have a lot of games, new games this year, bounce houses, all kinds of stuff. This is a community-wide event as well as a church event. So I would encourage you to invite young families to be with us on this special day. We'll have bounce houses for 2- and 3-year-olds all the way up to uh, 37-year-olds, okay? And it's just going to be a grand time, and we're looking forward to that. Sign up, please. We need a lot of volunteers for this. If you can, please sign up there in the entryway for that. Um, and then there'll be a meeting next Sunday night. So we really need you to sign up before then. And then drop off candy. Thank you for those who've already given candy uh, in the bin here in the corner. Please keep that in mind, if you will, also. Okay? And then I want that Mountain Sunday. I've already mentioned that. Brother Mike, let's go ahead and have the uh, ministry video by the Delapaz family. 
And uh, let's go ahead and bring that up and watch this. I think it's about five minutes long. And uh, we'll, let's uh, get an insight to what some of our missionaries are doing. I love Sunday nights where we're able to do this type of thing, uh, to be able to see where our monies are going in the mission field. And I know you'll be encouraged tonight. I am Brother David De La Paz. I was raised in a Christian family. When I was seven years old, we were attending a Protestant church. I thought I was saved already because my parents encouraged us to attend the church every Sunday with my brothers and sisters. But I came to realize that going to church, being a baptized member, and participating in every church activity will be enough for me to go to heaven. Last October 3, 1981, through the preaching of the gospel of one pastor, when the invitation was given for those who would like to be saved, I was the first who came forward. I finally gave my life to Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. I graduated May 1982 when I was in the Bible College. Then 1990, I started pastoring Shekinah Glory Baptist Church with a handful of family and young people. Since then, the church continued to grow numerically and spiritually from three different rented places with our faithful members who serve and help in the growing ministry of Shekinah Glory Baptist Church. Burdened by the condition of our community along the riverside, families living in the depressed areas and children along the streets, we started Jesus Loves the Little Children Ministry. We are having seven feeding programs every Saturday near the riverbanks. We encourage our people to witness and discipling the newly baptized members, along with our young people and adults, an annual Bible school program and Christmas gift giving. We have reached 1,300 children. Our main goal is to win souls for Christ, training the nationals and planting churches paving the way to open mission outreaches in different areas of Rizal province. At present, we have six homegrown preachers and their wives who have started their mission outreaches. I thank the Lord because my son, Michael Eliezer de la Paz, gave his life in a full-time ministry. Our prayer and desire for them is to raise support of $100 to help them in their mission works in a monthly basis. Our greatest need is our sports activity and fellowship hall, where children and young people can gather, play, fellowship together. We still need $75,000 to complete this. We have seen God's amazing provision in the past, even during pandemic times, and we know God will still do great and mighty things this time. He is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. I just hope and pray that we could be able to be partners in the mission here in the Philippines. 1 Corinthians 3, 9, For we are laborers together with God. You are God's building. You are God's Husbandry. May God bless us all.
know the visual did not work, but uh, hopefully you were able to hear that wonderful report by the De La Paz family. You guys come and sing for us tonight, if you will. And after you sing by the De La Paz, if you'll take just a few minutes and share what God has done with you and introduce yourself and uh, just uh, take just a few minutes there. And then we'll have uh, one of our groups come and sing, and then we'll have Brother De La Paz come back and, and preach for us tonight. All right? I know you're in for a treat, and to hear this wonderful family uh, to the Philippines. Good evening. <clears throat> it's, uh, you know, always good to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Josh, for giving us this wonderful opportunity to be able to uh, say, of course, the ministry that we have in the Philippines. So sorry we, you missed the, the, the videos, but what is important is the message, sure. the message itself. So, <clears throat> we will sing for the Lord. Amen. And we are not professional singers. I'm just a professional driver. <laughs> All right? <clears throat> so, may this song be a blessing to everyone. Uh, the Bible says, uh, God will never leave you nor forsake you. Sure. That's one of the promises of the Lord to every believer, to those who belong to Christ, family, and to everyone, to every believer in Christ. So may this song be a blessing to everyone. <clears throat> Fire through the flood. 
Well, I'm, it's so cold, you know. <coughs> Especially when you're on the outside, it's chilly. But anyway, in the Philippines, we have only two seasons. And that is hot and hotter, you know. <coughs> we are not used to have this kind of weather. But anyway, it's all by the grace of God. That's the reason why we were able to uh, come back to your church. And way back 2017, I, I met your preacher and his family. That was over more than six years ago, 2017, when we were at the other building, your church. But today, tonight, I see a lot of new faces. And I thank the Lord for that. So <clears throat> tonight, I would like to give a, just a very short testimony with regards to the ministries that we have in the Philippines. You know, we just arrived, just September 7. And uh, until now, we will be going back to the Philippines December 5. And we will be celebrating 33 years of Shekinah Glory Baptist Church. We started 1990. We have seven preachers, and one of them went to Nigeria. 221 million, and most of them are Muslims. One year, he stayed there and his family and we have six remaining preachers in the church, meaning to say those preachers, right now, they have their own mission daughter churches under the ministry of Shekinah. Those are homegrown. They grew up under my ministry. The pastor told me, Brother David, how young are you now? I told him in secret. I just whisper, I'm only 63 years old. <laughs> well, praise the Lord for that. So right now, please pray for our homecoming Sunday. That will be on December 2023. I miss my family already. And one of those preachers are our own son. His name is Michael Eliezer de La Paz. He gave his life in the ministry. He got a burden to win most, more, more Filipinos to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I thank God because when I was a little boy, we just attended the Christian church every Sunday. Every Sunday, I attended Sunday school and I attended the service until I finally realized that going to church is not enough. You might be in the church, but still lost. Thank God, October 3, 1981, the Lord convicted my heart. Even though I'm a religious, I attended, I was baptized, I graduated in the Bible college, but praise the Lord, because Jesus Christ, now my Savior, and the Lord of my life. I finally gave my life. October, 1, October 3, 1981. Thank God I got married to my wife Ethel. I've got only one wife. Amen. <laughs> and three kids. Michael is now a pastor. Donna is still single. Amen. <laughs> She's still single. And our young, youngest daughter is Daniela. You know, when I came to this church, I remember the life of Dr. Bud Owen. He was a sweet fellow. He always hugged me. You know, I remember that time when we were there at the building. David, I want you to come to the church, Temple Baptist Church. And from that time on, they took me as a missionary to the Philippines. 9,000 miles away from your country, you may not be able to come to the Philippines, but your, your prayers and your monthly support, that was a great, big help for us. 
I'm trying to invite, planning, praying to invite your preacher to come to the Philippines while he is still young. You know, we will feed him with chicken and McDonald's. <laughs> we have a lot of McDonald's in the Philippines. Oh, mind you. But folks, don't you know that mission is the nearest thing in the heart of God? I'm not here in front of you. If there are no American missionaries went to the Philippines, if there, are, if there were no missionaries from America went to the Philippines 1,900 years ago, but because of those American Christian missionaries, they were able to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. 110 million Filipinos, we are the fastest growing in population in Asia. 85% are Catholics. 5% are Muslims. 3% are Jehovah's sickness. Oh, I'm sorry. I, Jehovah's witness. All right. I'm sorry. And, and Mormons. And the Seventh-day Adventists. The Church of God. And even those Filipino. Mom, Melanie knew this. The Iglesia Ni Cristo. The Church of Christ native. One of the fastest growing cults in the Philippines. They believe that you cannot be saved if you are not a member of the church, baptized member. Outside of the church, you are unsaved. They got a huge building. But they believe that Jesus Christ is only man and not God. The Catholics believe God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, plus one, Mary. But folks, 1,300 kids attended our vacation Bible school. We were able to teach for three days. We have several outreaches. Praise the Lord. We teach them how to pray in Jesus' name only and not to Mary. Praise the Lord. It is my prayer. It is our burden to please pray for our, the completion of our building. I know you have a big amount that you're going to raise for your church. But I know that God can do something. I know that God is the prayer answering, hearing God. Please pray for that Completion for the completion of our church building. For what purpose? It is for our facilities like sports. And those kids will not be renting a basketball court just to pay at least $30 per hour. And of course, they will be come to the church and we will tell them about the story of Jesus. We have vacation Bible school and then we have Christmas gift giving. Put a smile on a child's face. You, you did not see in our videos. Those children, most of them are, are living in the river banks. And then when the rains fell, fall, the river will overflow. And they will be affected by those floodings. I want you to pray for that burden. We want to see the completion of Shekinah Glory Baptist Church. Pray for $75,000. I know it's a big amount, but the Bible says there's nothing impossible with the Lord. Pray for us. Thank you so much for the great teaching. Brother Dillip has... And we're going to pray about how we can be a part of that. 
brother. We'll get back to you on that. All right, special, you come and uh, sing for us tonight. I know you're going to be blessed and by this group. And then I want you to keep your Bibles open. And Brother Dale Paz is going to come back and preach for us tonight. Again, I'm ready to go back in the Mark, Gospel of Mark. And I was, I'll be honest with you, up until this afternoon, I was ready to go and to preach tonight. Just, but just Lord laid them on my heart to preach tonight. So I realize God has a purpose and a reason for that. And so I'm excited to hear our brother preach for us tonight. So you give a listen. I know there'll be a blessing. Uh, and then we'll come back and introduce Brother Dale Paz. The Savior, pilot me over life's tempestuous sea, boisterous waves. Charred and compass come from me. Jesus, save your pilot me as a mother stills her child. Thou canst touch the ocean wide. Ways obey thy will when thou sayest to them, Be still, wondrous sovereign of the sea. Jesus, save your pilot. so very much. Let's stand together for just a minute. You've been sitting for just a few minutes and Brother De La Paz is coming and uh, to preach for us tonight. And if you have your Bible, I want you to raise your Bible up. And uh, if you brought your Bible and then let's amen the preacher. And uh, Brother De La Paz, if you want to take us up to about 815, brother, that's about what time we get out or before or whatever you want to do, I guess. And uh, but anyway, uh, let's uh, you can be seated now. Thank you. I just wanted you to stretch your legs. And uh, Brother De La Paz is going to preach for us. We love him and we're grateful for him. So you listen now and I know God will help us in a great way. Thank you. Well, again, thank you so much for this wonderful uh, opportunity to preach the word. And uh, uh, the Bible says, Galatians 6.10, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are in the household of faith, regardless of our culture, Regardless of our language, regardless of our colors, regardless of our height, you know, I'm, I'm just a little five, six. The Americans are tall. Most of them are tall. But anyway, in the sight of God, if you are born again, born in the spirit, the Bible says we belong to the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank God because twice birth and once died. 
if the rapture, if the rapture will take place, the Bible says, those who are alive will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. But those who are dead in Christ shall rise first. Don't you worry, I will not speak a very long message because I believe in the saying of every preacher, blessed is the preacher who speaks short <laughs> because I'm short. For he shall be invited again. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm a little bit nervous, you know. <laughs> Let's talk about prayer. You know, I see a lot of informations everywhere. Pray for the peace in Jerusalem. I know you know you knew this. They need prayer. Israel need our prayers. Last week, October 7, I know that all of us were, you know, surprised by that attack. That's why we need to pray hard. Pray hard because it is a privilege. It is a privilege. Jesus Christ said, man ought always to pray and not to faint. One of his parables in Luke chapter 18 verse 1. Today I would like to give you one verse, Nehemiah 1.11. O Lord, I beseech thee, let now thine ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant, that was Nehemiah, and to the prayer of thy servants, who desire to fear thy name and prosper. I pray thee that thy servant this day, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man, for I was the king's cup bearer. Reasons why you and I need to pray. I know prayer is, you know, a very common uh, thing or probably we can practice every, every time. But I want you to see here, Nehemiah asked the Lord, the Lord's mercy. When he heard the news in chapter 1, verse 1, one of his brethren, his name was Hanani, and some remnant came from Jerusalem. They, they told about what's happening in Jerusalem. The gates thereof were burned with fire, and the Jerusalem were, were in reproach. They were ridiculed. You know what, what's, what, does, what does it mean? Nehemiah's heart was broken. And I believe he was discouraged through that report. Folks, I want you to see Nehemiah, what he did. He prayed. He prayed. The great evangelist R.A. Torrey said, we are too busy to pray. And so we are too busy to have power. We have a great deal of activity, but accomplish little. We have many services, but very few conversions. We, and we have much machinery, but few results. I want you to see how that devastating news came to Nehemiah. When he heard this news in Jerusalem, Nehemiah did what every godly leader will do. He prayed. The first reason why you and I need to pray. Number one, because prayer changes things. It changes things. When you pray, you are aligning your will to God's will. And when you do that, things start to change. Yes, prayer can change your bad circumstances, your, your adversities, your relationships, and even your difficulties. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1, These know also 
that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. We need to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because I believe that prayer can uh, change us things. Again, when we pray, it helps us to align ourselves to God's will. Number two, prayer is a weapon. Do you remember that? It is our weapon. Look at chapter 4 and verse number 9. The Bible says, Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them, them day and night. And then the Bible says, Because of them. Prayer is a weapon. When you pray, you are waging war against the enemies. When you became a child of God, when you trusted the Lord Jesus Christ and recognized that you are a guilty sinner, because the Bible says, for we or all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.10, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Brethren, when you became a child of God, remember that prayer is now our weapon. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of, of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. Yes, beloved in the Lord, don't you ever be afraid. Because Jesus Christ is now at, in your heart. He is now the, the Lord of the Lord and the, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. That's what the Bible says. Prayer can break strongholds, defeat demons, and protect you from harm. Prayer is a powerful weapon that can use to win the battle against evil. Isaiah chapter 54 and verse number 17. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And the righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Prayer is a weapon. It is the only weapon Satan could not duplicate. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, don't you, don't you thank God because God is just waiting on us. God is always willing. He opened his ears. He always ready to receive our requests, our prayers, just to pray in the name of Jesus. So I told you before, we teach our children how to pray only in the name of Jesus Christ. For more than 400 years, we were under by the Spaniards. They brought religion. They brought human traditions. They brought the Catholicism. But praise God, Christianity in the Philippines. We are always ready. The gospel is still open. The preacher can preach anywhere. Even in, in, the, in the prison. Even in the school. And he can even preach in front of so many uh, government officials. 3,000 government officials from mayor, vice mayor, up to the, until to the lowest level. He can preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Have you ever, have you ever been experienced struggles? Do you have a burdens? Do you have a problem, marital problem? Or maybe you've got a burden to win your, your unsaved loved ones. That's why we need to pray. We need to pray and ask the Lord that one of these days, keep on keeping on serving the Lord. And one of these days, 
because of prayer, God will open their hearts. Prayer is a weapon. And finally, prayer gives you power. It gives you power. Chapter 2, verse 20, Then answered I, I, I them and said unto them, The God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore we, his servants, will arise and build, but you have no portion, no right, nor memorial in Jerusalem. Pray again for the peace in Jerusalem. Millions of people are now in evacuation. Pray for every decision that they are going to make. Pray for your country. Pray for the Philippines. Pray for every nation. Your, your, your people, your pastor got a heart to support many missionaries. And always remember, God is, not un God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed toward His name, and do minister. Thank God because it is all by the grace of God. Because of prayer, it gives us power. Yes, for Nehemiah, prayer is powerful. When you pray, you are tapping into the power of God. And that power can be used to overcome anything that comes against you. Remember, our prayer move the heart of God. When Daniel was thrown in the lion's den, all the lions did not, you know, do harm against Daniel. Why? Because not just a weapon, but also prayer gives you power. John Bunyan, the author of Pilgrim's Progress, wrote, He who runs from God in the morning will scarcely find him in the rest of the day. Our day should begin with a humble seeking of God's help and power. We need revival. We all need revival. This pulpit it all depends upon the prayer of every member of Temple Baptist Church. No prayer, no power. Less prayer, less power. More power, more prayer, more power. Jeremiah 33, 3, the Bible says, Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great things which thou knowest not. William Cooper said, Satan trembles when he sees the weakest saints upon their knees. Pray for your pastor. Pray for his family. Why? Because he cannot do the work of God by himself. He needs your prayer. Pastor, happy appreciation. May the Lord continue to use you. I remember one word, the pastor, you, uh, the acronym, letter P is pray for his effectivity. A, assist to his ministry. S, support his necessity. T, thank his sincerity. O, obey his authority. R, respect his family. I believe with all my heart, prayer is, it gives us power. Acts chapter 1, 120 believers were in the upper room. Do you know what they are doing? They were one accord in prayer. One accord in prayer. They unite their hearts. In prayer, 120 believers in the upper room, it means to say that prayer went up. In Acts chapter 2, you will find verse 41, 3,000 souls were added unto the church. Why? Because power came down. Prayer gives you. 
Our Father, we thank you for the message. I pray that you will bless each one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. By the way, preacher, I have my prayer card. Let's have our heads bowed and eyes are closed tonight. We've heard a great message on prayer. And I wonder tonight, <clears throat> how's your prayer life? How's your prayer life? Do you have a regular walk with God on a daily basis in prayer and Bible reading? That's what's going to keep you going. You can't just rely on Sundays to give you enough gasoline to get through to next Sunday. You've got to have it. The Bible says keep yourselves in the love of God. And in order to do that, you're going to have to pray. It involves thanksgiving and requesting and seeking God and His guidance and His leading and so many different things. How's your prayer life? Do you have a prayer time that you say every day when I get up, I'm going to start my day with prayer? I hope you do. And if you don't, what a great time to start with this challenge to pray. I hope that you have a prayer life that you hold in that scripture reference when it says uh, that we are to pray without ceasing. Uh, praying all the time uh, about the different needs in our lives. Maybe we're at work, maybe we're at the gas station, maybe we're at the bank, maybe we're uh, at the store, wherever we're praying. We're keeping that, that open heart to the Lord. And I like what he said. I like what Brother Delapaz said to finish it up. Pray, prayer, through prayer comes power. And I don't know about you, but I, I so desire the power of God upon this ministry. I was reminded of one of the preachers of, in the 1800s where God really used. It was either uh, Charles Haddon Spurgeon or D. L. Moody, Dwight L. Moody. And one of those preachers was asked, what is the secret of your ministry? And without hesitation, they said, it's the prayers of our people. And I believe with all of my heart, just as what was preached tonight, the rise, the, the increase, the harvest, the fruit, the building, as God blesses, God's the one who builds his church, but I believe that prayer has a major impact upon whether God continues to bless and people continue to be saved, baptized, added to the church. And I wonder tonight... In just a moment, we're going to have the instrumentalist play, and Brother Holly's going to sing. And I wonder tonight if you would come around the altar. I, I'm going to find my place around this altar, and I'm going to pray. Because I want the power of God upon this place. I want God to, to be real to me in every service. And Brother Delph is right. The message is right. The book of Nehemiah is built in through prayer. Nehemiah got that burden for Jerusalem through prayer. And may God help us to have a prayer life that will increase our burden, will increase a spirit of gratitude, will give us guidance and leading, where we'll see God continue to bless the ministry of Temple Baptist Church. Raise your hand. I'm just curious tonight. Raise your hand with heads bowed and eyes are closed. You say, Pastor, I need to pray more. I could pray more, and I desire to have a more fervent in a prayer life. As you raise your hand, I, I won't mind to be the first one up. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man what availeth much availeth much much comes through a life of prayer let's stand together heads bowed and eyes are closed the musicians are playing i want you to come brother holly's going to sing just as many verses as we can i want you to come right now right now folks are coming from all over the building would you meet me here and say lord help my prayer life Maybe you just want to pray for the ministry of this church. Maybe you want to pray for somebody on your heart that God has placed there. Maybe you want to pray for the land situation or whatever it may be. Let's seek the Lord tonight together.
the verse. You're not saved. Tonight would be a great night to get saved. Sing this next verse together. Think about it. I need to be reminded to pray, to have a prayer time, to have that prayer life, to have it to be a genuine time. Or sometimes, you know my heart, sometimes it becomes a routine for me. I know to do it. I have it in my schedule. I make time for it. Sometimes it's just the routine to say the same thing. Father, help us to be, help us to be passionate prayer warriors. Help us to be fervent, effectual in our prayer time. Father, we love you. Thank you for the Delapaz family. I pray that you continue to bless them and use them. Help us continue to hear as we're serving in different parts of the world. But yet, Father, we're, we're all the same team. And I pray that you'd use us in a great way. Well, thank you for what you do in our lives. Help us this week as we travel, as we go about our jobs, our homes. Help us, Lord, please in every way to look to you in Jesus name Amen well Brother David thank you so much for that message that was wonderful and uh, now don't no, don't don't be surprised if Pastor Bowles comes in in Filipino Sunday attire now I like this setup I, uh, you know how I feel about ties and everything and I'm just joking but, uh, but thank you so much for being here tonight if you're glad you came would you say man and I wouldn't miss the service for nothing in this world. And, uh, and uh, I'm certainly thankful for the Delapaz family. But, uh, brother, will you take your family out in the entryway here uh, by your sign? If the service was a blessing to you, I want to encourage you to get back there and shake their hand and let them know how much you appreciate them. And I'm thankful that we can have a church, that we can have these missionaries in. We know where our money's going, you know? What a blessing. And uh, our prayer, and we know how to pray for them. And uh, so I'm thankful for that, okay? And their prayer letter, like all the other missionaries, are in the prayer hallway, in our missionary hallway. And so you can see those really at any time, all right? And uh, don't forget about the sign-up sheets for the Harvest Festival. Also, um, for the Christmas play uh, practice, uh, or, or for the Christmas play sign-up, don't forget about that. Operation Christmas Child, the boxes. There's a lot more boxes over in the activity center I saw before I came over here. Um, uh, empty nesters activity. Don't forget about seeing Joe, uh, Jeff, and Nancy about that if you want to be a part of that, okay? So keep all that in mind. I love you, church. Thank you for everything. You're the best. God bless you. Turn around, smile, find a visitor, shake their hand, and we'll say good night. God bless you. We'll see you Wednesday night. You're dismissed.